Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, September 8th, and it is a beautiful, sunny, cool September day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. A little bit of rain yesterday, which we haven't had rain in quite a while. It was very overcast, but today the sun came out and it's just a just a wonderful morning. I am uh, sitting here in the shop. I'm going to give you an update on my tin sealing method, uh, which we talked about a few months back, and I'll give you the whole story there. Uh, but we're going to we're going to get into that. I'm going to talk about some of the things I've done in the past, what I've decided is the best option now. You might have other options. Put them in the comments. I I I love learning about this stuff, but this is what I'm probably going to stick with, and you'll see why in a minute. But before we get to that, I've got the doodler here, the uh, Mincer doodler, and let me see the top of that really cool pipe. And in this is uh, some haunted bookshop because I wanted something comfortable and familiar on this beautiful September morning. And I've got a cup of coffee over there that you can't see, but you might see it come into frame. All right, so. Years ago, and I don't remember how many years ago, and I'll try to put links down below to, to these uh, videos. I, I always forget to do it. I'll try to remember to do it today. But I did a, a, a video that was called something like popping tins and how to fix them or something like that, where I talked about uh, this product here, parafilm, which is something I learned about from the labs. It's uh, sort of this waxy, uh, imagine wax paper if you could stretch it. It's like a stretchy wax, uh, and it's great. You take off some of this, you, you can wrap it around the tin, and it, it sealed the tin. And it worked really well for years, but then I bought this new box, and it just doesn't work as well. And I had the box I had, I had for a really long time. So I'm thinking something changed in the, in the, the composition of the parafilm because it started to crack and re release from the tins. So I need to find something else, and uh, th that's something else that I decided to try was this Renfrew hockey tape, and this is uh, part of the Swiss Army knife of tapes for me. I, I use this for a lot of stuff. I, I always have a roll of this in the shop. Its cousin is uh, this Renfrew uh, cloth hockey tape, which is amazing. I mean, I use this. I have a roll of this in the car. I take a roll of it whenever I go fishing. Uh, I've got rolls of it down here. It. it it's tough. It's it's a fabric tape. It's tough. It's easy to tear. Uh, it makes a great emergency bandage, or maybe not so emergency if I'm down here working on something and I just don't want to go upstairs. <laughs> you know, for a small nick that's bleeding, you can wrap that around there and a the little super glue your grip. Don't take medical advice from guys on YouTube. Anyway, those those are the Renfrew tapes, and this one uh, just struck me, and I think. Somebody sent me an email, and I don't remember who it was, but apparently my buddy Christian, uh, Bona Piper, years ago, told me about this, and I ignored him. Sorry, Christian, because uh, I do not remember ever talking about this with him uh, for sealing tins, and I thought, well, let me try it. And uh, yeah, so we put back in June, it's actually June 9th, so almost exactly four months ago, I took two tins and I sealed one with parafilm and I actually doubled up the parafilm to try to give it the best chance of working. And then I sealed a tin with this and I just set them aside. So four months later, how do they look? Well, let's start with the parafilm. You can see it makes a nice, uh, nice seal, but is it cracking anywhere? that by the way this tin was given to me by ghost cob that's why it says ghost cob on the side uh, you can see the cracks forming there now this is after only four months if this is a couple years that the parafilm will essentially be completely separated from it and that's that's what I found in my cellar when I first discovered there was a problem so I can't recommend the parafilm anymore uh, something's changed it's just not the product it used to be, and uh, you don't want to sell your tobacco like that. Now granted, a round tin like this is probably going to be just fine without the without anything on it, but those square tins are more of a problem, and uh, you know, you want your tobacco to be good when you open it. All right, what about the hockey tape? Obviously it didn't crack. 
stays stays attached really well, seals really well. I mean, I knew this was going to work. This isn't a surprise. One item in full disclosure, that edge, where is it? Right there, you can see where, where the tape ended. Uh, I noticed a couple weeks after I put this on that that was separating. Uh, the reason I believe is that at the end, you know, I was trying to pull it really tight, and at the end I held on to that, and I probably got some oil or dirt from my fingers on it, and it just wasn't sticking as well in like that last half inch. So I actually trimmed that off and uh, pushed it back down. But that's, it, it is slightly raised there. I'm sorry, I keep losing where it is. Huh, it's really hard to pick that up. Slightly raised at the end of the tape, but that's overlapped by several inches, so I don't think there's anything to worry about. So I've converted completely. Uh, I'm now using Renfrew Hockey Tape for everything. I'll put a link to the Amazon site or some site where, where you can see, uh, find out more information about it. Uh, no affiliation, no, I don't, I don't do any affiliate links or anything like that, so it, no benefit to me if you click on it or not. Or just, uh, just Google Renfrew, R-E-N-F-R-E-W, and uh, you will find it. So, good stuff. Highly recommend it. That's what I'm going to use from now on, and I am slowly moving through my cellar and retaping everything, uh, which is a real pain to do, actually. Uh, but it must be done. So that's uh, that's the main meat of the the video today. So if you just tuned in for tin sealing methods, you can leave now. But please don't, because I'm going to talk about other things. But if you already left, you don't know that. Uh, no, I don't really have much to, to, to talk about, to be honest. Uh, we, I did a little bit of stuff down here yesterday. I made a uh, little cork thing to screw onto my uh, live, live center for the wood lathe. Uh, it's just a little cork bumper that lets me go up against something without damaging it. So that was fun, easy to do. Uh, yeah, it didn't take very long at all, but it was it was a fun little project. And uh, I'm working on a working on a pipe, which for these these test billiards, I'm using up whatever stuff I've got for stem material. So it's going to be a wild acrylic stem. But uh, yeah, another billiard. It's very obviously it's very rough shape, but it is drilled. And the drilling went really well on this. You can see that big old flaw on the side there. So this is this is another one of those pieces of briar that I got. I think these were I think these were ten dollars each. You know, cut into Abishan shape, uh, small. But I got them specifically so I could do the ten billiards. This will be number five. So I'm pretty excited about this. I'm obviously moving slow, but that's okay. It's a hobby. I can move as slow as I want, and I'm learning tons. This this time I really focused on the drilling and. Uh, I got it. I, I got the drilling right. I had a call in uh, my buddy Phil Rivera at the last minute just to get some advice on on whether or not I should stop, and uh, he he gave me really good advice, and it's it's perfect. So I'm really happy with that. I I I, I now understand how to make those two holes meet perfectly, and how to assess whether or not they have met perfectly. So that's uh, that's an accomplishment. Beyond that, um, not a lot to do. I'm going to call my brother this afternoon and chat with him for a little while. Got to make some dinner tonight. Got to keep the dogs happy. Maybe I'll take them out in the yard and throw something and watch them ignore it for a while. It's always fun. I technically should start to uh, take down the gardens and get them ready for the winter, but I'm just not feeling it today. And uh, I ordered a, uh, a metal tool shed of sorts to put out in the yard to put all my rakes and things like that in. Uh, I have a lot of them in the garage, but then there's a collection that has just sort of accumulated outside and foolishly I just left them out last winter so I gotta de-rust them and then stuff. It's uh, So it'll be nice just to have something to collect those into and uh, keep it keep it neat and keep them protected somewhat. So what I'm the reason I'm talking about that is that tool shed is going to arrive next Friday. I have to assemble it, so I'm thinking next weekend I'm going to be spending a lot of time outside. 
Uh, it'll probably snow. So anyway, I am starting to ramble a bit, but a lot of you tune in for the ramble, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Give you a quick update on my brother and my father-in-law and such. Uh, brother is doing okay. He still doesn't have a diagnosis. He still doesn't have a treatment plan. So we're hoping that happens soon. And uh, father-in-law is 94 now. And uh, you know, nature and God are taking its course. So it's uh, it's tough on the family to watch it, but. Uh, they're, they're, they're pulling together and doing the right things and he's hanging in there and being his old grouchy curmudgeon -y self so anyway keep keep the prayers coming for both of them please uh, and for my wife and her family who are you know it's it's tough to, to deal with something like that so it's, uh, they need all the, the support they can get And here it's just me and the dogs. I go to work, I come home, I feed the dogs, I go to bed. That's pretty much my life. Uh, so, not getting a lot done hobby wise just because I don't have the time. You know, I've got to do all the stuff my wife would do, and then all my job, and all the stuff that I would do. And that leaves like, I had half an hour yesterday where I made a cork thing. <laughs> that's okay like everything else it comes in cycles and there are seasons and there's a time for everything so right now is not the time for me to be making pipes but it is the time for me to be drawing this rambly video to an end I hope you enjoyed it I hope you got some information out of the uh, the tin ceiling again can't go wrong with this and you know what, even if you don't, if you buy it and you don't like it for ceiling tins, you'll find a million other uses for it. I really should see about an affiliate link, huh? <laughs> With that, guys, I'm going to draw this to a close. Have a great Sunday. I hope you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.